Hey y'all, this is Sydney. I'm the Tireless Tangler and you've arrived at day 36 of the 100 Days of Zen Tangle Project 2020. Thank you all so much for being with me today. Our tangle is going to be Ediper, Ediper by Damie Tang that we've had, uh, uh, which one was it? The one we did for Linda Farmers. Uh, oh, the Liu Liu Dashan, Dashan uh, that we had from Damie before. And so this is a fun little tangle. It looks like a folded paper. And uh, here are a few examples of some of the different things that we can do with this. So let's step it out and get started and see if we can get this video down under an hour. Ah. All right. For this tile, I am going to use my um, 05 in a dark brown and see how this goes. Okay. Um, I don't know, it just looked pretty with the tile, the tan tile, and, and I thought, yeah, why not? So I'm asking, why not? So the way that you start Ediper is by making a spiral, and we've done these in several tangle, tangles so far. So I'm going to start right in the middle, and I'm going to make a couple of big ones So while we step it out, and then I'm going to sort of do a border around it and see how that goes. So you want to start with a spiral like this, okay? And then you want to make another spiral like this. That's not hard, right? Come on, it's not hard. So what we're doing with this is creating an optical illusion, okay? We're going to look at this as this. these are paper curls right here, curled paper, all right, or rolled paper. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect this end with the bottom point, okay? Now, this looks like several other things, but the magic happens when you connect this outer edge like this, okay? And then we're gonna shade this background a little bit and drop it back, and you're gonna have a piece of curled paper there. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. Oh, I forgot my glasses. It's a terrible way to start a tangle. Blind. Here we go. We're going to start with this outside. We're gonna curve it in just a little bit to meet the end. And then we're going to put, now, if on the ends you have these little curled sections in, you don't want to add one, one more little line like this. Okay, and ta-da, we have Eddie Purr. Now, uh, these, it seems like there's a lot to remember here. It's it's really very simple. Let's do one, a couple more. And I'm gonna go ahead and curve that around. So we want each of these lines that we're going to connect to come to the center point, okay? So in this one, I'm gonna start with the outside line and it's going to be um, drawn behind like in Hollabaugh. And I'm gonna connect this with a nice curve. And then this little end that's stuck in there, that's gonna get this treatment, okay? And if you'll notice, each of these lines, even in these, these are all pointing towards this center point, okay? You don't need to worry about how those work, just point them at the center, at the bottom, and it's gonna work out. Let's do one more. Okay, and so I'm gonna do the outside edge first. Then I'm going to do the inside curved part. And then I'm gonna hook up this little back part. Pretty, huh? So now, 
uh, Jamie has uh, several, quite a few variations on this. And uh, let's try some of those out. My very favorite one is uh, when she draws her spiral, she puts a little point on there. Okay, so I'm going to put another one in here, put a little point on it, and then complete your spiral, right? Now we're pointing towards here, along the outside edge, the inside edge, again, pointing towards the center, and your little curly Q in the middle gets this treatment outside edge to the center, inside edge to the center, and your little inside paper edge. Very pretty, right? So she has a couple of other variations. Uh, one of them did not work particularly well for me, but uh, another one that I really liked was uh, she has got this more uh, not so rolled paper, but some sort of stuck out paper. <laughs> Let's try this. So she's got something like this. Okay. And then she does this, the inside line. And the outside line, you just have a little uh, rounded thing and you don't have the little rolled paper thing. Okay, so that's another way you can do it. And uh, the way I really like, other than this one, is a sort of um, off on your own version. I know what you're thinking, but you'd be right. <laughs> I like doing off on my own versions. And so if we make some shapes like this, and then we connect them all up. Remember, you're pointing towards the center. Let's do the inside edge. And then this outer edge. Okay, so this is what I have. Now for shading, this is going to be uh, quite simple if, if this is the way you decide to go with it. And so uh, you would take your shading to the inside or back sides of these. Take your shading to their back sides. <laughs> Around here, that's what we call their bottoms or their bums or wherever you're from, the gluteus maximus. And all of a sudden, you can see it, right? Now, when you have these little curly, these uh, little things here, you're going to want them even darker than the back. Like this, yes. So really dark in the little in the little inside curl, and then a nice light pencil blend on the on the uh, what looks like the inside of this. Yeah. I, I really like this. I really like this. I've actually seen this so many times, but I've never actually done it myself. And so I'm pretty excited to try this out. So pick whichever version or all versions that you really like. And get going. And so on these, I'm going to shade up here and back here. 
but I'm going to leave this outside part white. That sort of kind of sort of kind of makes sense. All right. So I'm going to start my tile and I'm going to add some uh, forms of this in here just to add some interest. And then I'm going to do a border around it. I hope you'll stay with me for this. And if not, I will see you tomorrow. If so, then we will chat and have fun. I think for this middle portion, I'm going to add a couple more of these. Um... And see how I get. Now in this instance, you want, again, the ends of your paper, or because I think of this as paper. <laughs> you want the ends of your, um, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. You guys be with me. <laughs> my tongue and my brain have, have disconnected permanently. And so it's always exciting to see what will come out. This is not my favorite thing over here. But that's okay. I'm going to live with it. I'm going to do a couple of these. I really like this version. It's just sort of like a messed up paper, and I like that. <laughs> we won't we won't go too far into the psychology of that. Because I'm afraid of what we'll find. Okay. Um, do a couple of regular ones. once you get your strokes down on this, it's very, very simple. Very simple. Um... Those will always be my favorites, the little uh, pointy ones. I think they look so delicate and pretty. If you start allowing your lines to not go towards the center, then you'll end up with something that looks a little bit funky. Maybe not the effect you're looking for, but, you know, if that works for you, that's going to be all right. I really like this. This is definitely organic. Uh, most definitely organic. And we know how I feel about those. We'll do another grid pattern soon, guys. Hmm. Let's do and here is a good example. This is not pointed towards the center, although I could get it there. And so part of this looks like it's pulling one way and part of it looks like it's pulling the other way. 
And so uh, that's why you want your your lines to go towards the center. Otherwise you have something that looks a little off. Um, um, well, So just pick whatever you like or do them all. Have fun with it. Oops. Hopefully not that much fun. You can build on it from a center point like I did or you can do this next number. So in a, I want to make this go all the way around. So what I'm going to do is make a start just like I did here, decide which um, version I'm going to do here, which of course I already have. And I'm gonna start in here a little bit so I have room. And I'm just gonna make a little, whoops, guess we're gonna do one of these here. And that's absolutely okay. These do not have to be perfect. Apparently, I'm going to do them both here. That's all right. Okay, and we're just going to keep doing this. Apparently, this is the way I'm going for it. And so we're just going to do this all the way around. This is how I'm going to do it, and uh, I'm going to finish up now. And we're going to do some shading and use our white charcoal pencil on this because that works really well on the tan. And uh, see how it see how it goes. Just jump right in here.
at this point, it's time to uh, finish up. And so I'm going to add a few more elements to sort of fill this out here in the middle and sort of giving it, giving, give it a little bit more um, space here. And uh, then we'll see what's up. go through here quickly and shade and today I'm going to use my um, Koi water brush because it will go much faster. First I'm going to go through here and darken all of the spots that are between here. Yes, that's an orb. Don't freak out about it. <laughs> it's going to stay right there and nobody's ever going to notice. Put another one right here. And I'm just going to put little orbs and blacking in anywhere I have gaps. Just like I tend to do on everything. Of course, your art is yours and you may do with it as you wish. Just because I do something a certain way does not mean that that has to translate to your art. Your art is yours. And in the same way I can do what I want on my tiles, you may do the same on yours. I highly recommend it. You guys have some amazing creativity going on. And I do not want to get in the middle of that. So please keep that up. By treating the gaps in this way, you are sort of giving a more finished look. Which is always a good thing. And again, I'm just looking for little gaps anywhere in here that need a home. And I'm just adding little orbs and blacking any extra spots around here. And uh, now I think I'll do the same
with our center line here. Which is a little wobbly, but it's going to be okay. And this is going to curl back and forth a bit because of the way I drew the, the uh, border. That's all right. As I go, I'm just going to uh, watch for stray lines and any blacking opportunities. anything I can do to make this look more finished. Okay, this is a lot of uh, action for a tile, so hopefully with a little shading, this will get um, a little more palatable. So let me see if I can... For some finishing touches, I'm going to use my white charcoal pencil. This is by General Pencil. These are the smoothest, nicest um, charcoal pencils, uh, white charcoal pencils I have ever used. Uh, they go on so smoothly. And against this tan tile, it's going to be awesome. So I'm just going to pick up the, the uh, front part of each of these. On these, um, it's just going to be this little front flap.
Isn't that beautiful? So I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I love the way uh, the contrast of this between the shading and the tan tile. There's that spot I need to put something in. Wait, let's not move from here. Okay, guys, this is where I'm going to leave you today. This is Eddie Purr by Damie Tang. And uh, I hope that you guys are going to have some smarter ideas about how to use this than I do. And I can't wait to see your tiles. Don't forget to tag me at the Tireless Tangler or hashtag the Tireless Tangler, Tangler when you post your art on Instagram. Uh, I heard the person that asked for an Instagram tutorial for how to do this. And uh, I will get that done uh, hopefully today or tomorrow. So uh, thank you all so much for being with me today. And I will see you for day 37 tomorrow. Bye, guys.